Hi, this is Andrea, and I'm here with you for HIT 210 to talk about medical necessity. Medical necessity, by definition, is um, a medical procedure, service, or test that's required following a doctor's diagnosis. Under the Social Security Act, the definition is no payment may be made under Medicare Part A or Part B for any expenses incurred for items or services which are not reasonable and necessary for the diagnosis or treatment of illness or injury or to improve the functioning of a malformed body member. So um, these are some definitions you need to be aware of when it comes to medical necessity. Um, the US, um, C the US, the agency of CMS defines medical necessity as healthcare services or supplies needed to treat I'm sorry, needed to prevent, diagnose, or treat an illness, injury, condition, disease, or its symptoms that meet accepted standards of medicine. So how do you know if something meets medical necessity? Because meeting medical necessity is going to be required if you want to make sure it's going to be covered by insurance. And sometimes, even though something is medically necessary, it still may not be covered by insurance. And this is where it's important for patients to know what's covered as well as for the provider to um, check into that. And so this is just information about um, how someone could go about identifying if something will be covered or to check their coverage criteria. Um, a lot of times they'll have websites, they'll have the information, um, they'll have a number you can call to talk to someone, um, those types of things. There are times when um, they will determine that something is not medically necessary or even if it is medically necessary, it's not going to be covered or there will be some kind of limit on it. Um, so you kind of have to clarify all those um, when you're trying to get prior approval or prior authorization or just to verify coverage. There, um, who determines medical necessity? There's a couple of different ways. Um, we'll be talking about NCDs and LCDs, um, those coverage determinations that um, have information, but most payers are the ones who determine what is medically necessary. Um, so you have to figure out what, what insurance the patient has and what does their particular insurance consider, med consider medically necessary. Some pre preventative services may be covered as medical necessities, like an annual wellness visit or certain tests or procedures that prevent health issues, like a, a screening colonoscopy or a screening mammogram. Um, but again, that varies. I included here Cygnus definition of medical necessity. I um, thought it was interesting um, from a particular um, payer standpoint. Um, how they take the term and then kind of expand on it. It says here that medically necessary or medical necessity means healthcare services that a physician exercising prudent clinical judgment would provide to a patient. The service must be one, for the purpose of evaluating, diagnosing, or treating an illness, injury, disease, or its symptoms. Two, in accordance with the generally accepted standards of medical practice. Three, clinically appropriate in terms of type, frequency, extent, site, and duration, and considered effective for the patient's illness, injury, or disease. Um, meaning that it's, it's sort of standard of care, but also research supported. That it's not something experimental. Number four, it can't be primarily for the convenience of the patient, healthcare provider, or other physicians or healthcare providers, and it cannot be more costly than an alternate, alternative service or sequence of services at least as likely to produce equivalent therapeutic or diagnostic results as to the diagnosis or treatment of that patient's illness, injury, or disease. So again, they're trying to keep it to what has been established what has worked, what has been inexpensive um, with all of this. For these purposes, generally accepted standards of medical practice mean 
standards that are based on credible scientific evidence published in peer-reviewed medical literature generally recognized by the relevant medical community, physician specialty society recommendations, the views of physicians practicing in the relevant clinical area, and any other relevant factors. Preventative care may be medically necessary, but coverage for medically necessary preventative care is governed by the terms of the applicable plan documents. So I brought this information here because it's, it, I think it really reflects um, the norms of all payers. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples. First example, patient presented with a single chronic well-controlled problem, osteoarthritis. Unfortunately, the practitioner's explanation of the nature of this patient's problem is too vague to get even a sense of whether the office visit and or any additional or new treatment is at all medically necessary. Is a three-month follow-up visit reasonable and necessary for stable chronic osteoarthritis? Why or why not? Those are the questions that the information in the medical record should address for care and payment to be determined as appropriate. If the documentation in the chart doesn't clearly demonstrate the need and the requirement and the value, um, it's going to be very hard to justify medical necessity. Second example, the patient has primary pulmonary hypertension and has been taking sildenafil. The provider determines that the patient needs to increase their dose to a quantity higher than the six tablet limit that is the standard dosing level. Sildenafil use in patients with primary pulmonary hypertension is supported by clinical literature, but still relatively uncommon. What should the provider do to ensure medical necessity is met so the patient's dose can be raised? Document, document, document. All right, so um, going further, um, this, is, this link here is for colorectal cancer screening. And it might be one that you would want to click on and take a look at. But some questions to ask yourself. Are there standards for services, tests, or patients? Are there expectations for anything to be done prior to the service, test, or patient action? Are there expectations for anything to be done after the service, test, or patient action? How do you prove compliance with the standards and or expectations? How do you verify or validate the compliance? Um, meaning the information that's entered on the bill. How do you, how do you make sure that that is, is going to help you verify or validate compliance with the standards or expectations? And what could or should be done if the standards and or expectations cannot be fulfilled, yet the patient has an apparent need or want for the service, test, or action? So things to be thinking about if you're dealing with medical necessity in providers and patients. So what are some tips to prevent medical necessity denials? The first one is to know the rules and the rationale. Um, so go out and research things. Communicate with the patient. Make sure the patient understands what they're getting into or what they're asking or what the, or what the provider is wanting the patient to do and, and to making sure that the patient is compliant with that. Document, 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 and then code and bill accurately and timely. This is an example of radiology rationale for medical necessity. This is an example of reasons why someone might need a radiograph or an x-ray that providers really should document. Now, granted, not all of them apply to every situation, but this is a great um, list that providers could refer to or use as a teaching tool for themselves that when they're getting ready to order a radiology exam, that they'd be thinking about documenting what applies to the patient to justify it. So I'm going to read through this. You must have a specific reason to expose a patient to ionizing radiation in order to visualize his or her spine and meet the criteria of medical necessity. I want to see what I am adjusting. 
um, if you're a DO or a chiropractor, is no longer a sufficient reason to take x-rays and ask a third-party payer to reimburse for those x-rays. The following list of x-ray criteria is intended to be a guide for the use of medically ne necessary radiographs. The criteria should only be used after a thorough clinical examination of the patient consistent with the information derived from the patient's history and presenting complaints. The patient's record should contain your order as a provider and your rationale for the x-rays as part of your clinical documentation to justify the x-rays. The list below contains some of the most common criteria to use as a guide. The list, the items listed are intended as suggestions and not, are not all inclusive. Use your clinical judgment to support your documentation regarding the needs for radiographs. So what are the things that they list? History of significant trauma to rule out a fracture or dislocation. Over 50 years of age. Recent trauma, red flag, or areas of complaint only if the pain is at least a 4 out of a 10 on a visual analog scale. Over 70 years of age, you want, to, you want areas of complaint to be treated only. Neuromotor deficits, you're trying to rule out spondylolithesis <laughs> or tumor. Unexplained wage, weight, I'm sorry, unexplained weight loss could be a symptom of malignancy, so you might be looking for bone mats. Reasonable suspicion of ankylosing spondylitis or other inflammatory arthritides. Significant history of drug or alcohol abuse, which could be risk factors for osteomyelitis, osteoporosis, or trauma. History of cancer, so that makes the possibility of metastatic cancer greater. Significant history of prolonged steroid use. This carries with it an increased risk for infection and osteoporosis. If the patient has a fever of more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it is a potential sign of osteomyelitis or an epidural abscess, which you would definitely need to rule out. Failure to improve with a trial of conservative therapy. If, you've, if the providers had the patient on conservative therapy and it's not working, um, being able to document what the conservative therapy has been, how long it has been going on, and that it's been, the patient's been evaluated several times and they failed to improve is justification for moving into um, more testing. Substantial examination findings that warrant films to rule out pathology prior to initiating a course of treatment, such as straight, raising straight leg with neurologic deficits or multiple sites of suspicious pain. History of spinal surgery in the area to be treated. Um, if someone's had spinal surgery and then they've got issues going on, um, they definitely need to have some kind of visualization of what's going on in that area and what has changed since that spinal surgery. History of surgery that might reasonably affect the proposed treatment. Again, you're looking to see what has happened after that surgery that has now um, resulted in an issue. Reasonable suspicion of bone demineralization. Um, if there's something going on and there's a suspicion that maybe there's some bone demineralization that's happening, um, it needs to be visualized. That would be a justification of, of medical necessity. Hard or soft tissue mass noted upon palpation. Um, again, that could be a tumor, um, and it could be an aggressive, nasty tumor. Prolonged unremitting symptoms with progressive severity or prolonged unremitting system, symptoms severe enough to awaken the patient at night um, could very well be a justification. Deformity with stiffness or a significant medical history such as chronic inflammatory arthro arthropathies, sorry, positive rheumatoid factor, where you're looking at rheumatoid arthritis, significant scoliosis confirmed through appropriate history and exam. I like the note here at the end, how it is the, to your advantage as a provider to note in your documentation if there is no need for films. For instance, the patient appears to be a healthy person with no signs or symptoms of, of a serious disease that could be ruled out through x-ray. There was nothing present in the chart indicating that x-rays were needed for this patient at this time. Or nothing present in the examination 
and the canning x-rays were needed for this patient at this time. I think that's really wise too because it's saying that at the time you're examining the patient um, or the provider is that there's nothing there. So if you work with providers and you're seeing medical necessity denials for radiology exams, this might be something you could share with that provider as a way to help them with their documentation. So I have some additional websites um, that you might want to go into and take a look at if you have extra time or extra interest. And that is it for medical necessity. Thanks.